And and it's important to note also that 40% of Europe is still radioactive from Chernobyl. What 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 really staggers me, Arnie, as a paediatrician, I, I guess, is that this is so irreversible. And what, once it happens, it's it's happened. There's nothing anyone can do about it. And people, I'm sure it's happened to you, have been ringing me saying, what can I give my children to eat? What blocks radiation? What gets radiation out of bodies? Have, have people been approaching you about that? You know, uh, you're right. We're... Dr. Steve Wing, an epidemiologist who's been on our site, said, you know, we are all at risk. Obviously, the Japanese are worse, but we're at a point now where we can't run and we can't hide. Yeah. And uh, we get frequent questions, you know, what should I do? Um, should I take a Geiger counter to the supermarket? And we're, we're at a point where it's evenly distributed everywhere, except in Japan and the Cascades of, of, of North America. But the rest of the world... And um, we we have basically, you know, committed that people are going to die of cancer worldwide because we've spread out this radioactivity essentially globally. Um, and you're right; there's um, it's not it's not something you can clean up. There's there's things the Japanese should be doing to prevent it from getting worse. Especially, you know, they burn the rice. Um, the, after the rice is uh, harvested, they burn the stalks of the straw. And um, it concerns me that they're in the process throwing back up the cesium that's already wound up on the ground. Now, there's a lot of things they can do to prevent it from moving. Yeah. But uh, basically, you're, you're absolutely right, Helen, that uh, um, we all know the moment Chernobyl began. But tell me that the moment it ended, and, and there hmm. is no end. Now, the rice is just starting to be harvested and they're finding cesium-137 in the rice. And the rice is more than just food for the Japanese. It's almost a spiritual symbol, isn't it, rice? And, yeah, um, there's also some indications that there was some uh, um, 19, uh, 2010 rice that was slipped into the uh, process to make some of the rice uh, pass the test. Oh, but, that, oh uh, diluting it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah there were some people that did see bags from 2010 uh, in the same area as bags from 2011, and it appeared that they were blending it. Yeah, I think I saw that. Then. Now talk about um, the, the the radioactive sewage. Why is the sewage in Tokyo and elsewhere radioactive? How did the radiation get into the sewage system? And and what, what are the Japanese deciding to do about the sewage system, Arnie Gunderson, and the radioactive sewage? Well, we're working with some people in Tokyo who have a, a filter on their house. And um, the, the filter, um, they, they send the filter to uh, the lab we work with, and every month they examine the filter. The filters from the summer were less radioactive than the filter they removed on October 1st. So what's happening is that the radiation in the air in Tokyo has actually increased in September compared to back in the summer. And I, I think what's happening is that, you know, one is the releases from the plant, but two is the is the burning of nuclear material around the country uh, in order to um, uh, to minimize its effect on your particular property, they burn it. So what we're seeing is all this uh, contamination now falls on the ground, runs into sewers, and contaminates the sewer system. The Japanese... Um, concentrate their sewage by, by incineration, and they're coming up with high quantities of radioactive sewage sludge, so high that it, um, it, it needs a solution, but there is no solution. So it's sitting outside in large, uh, under gigantic tarps, and of course every day the tarps get larger and larger and larger. Um, there's no solution right now to it. They're talking about the equivalent of 50 football fields full, 50 feet high, 20 meters high, 50 football fields full of, um, of contaminated sewage sludge is, um, is a likely outcome here, and there's no place to put it. And so they're burning it? That's after they burn it. The, the, oh, the that's after they burn it? Yes, after they burn it, the consolidated sludge, is so radioactive that it could easily fill 50 football fields. Good God. 
<laughs> what they used to do with it, Helen, is make cinder blocks for buildings. But the last thing you want to do now is have a radioactive building. But so, so there are two things happening then, Andy Gunderson. First, by burning the radioactive sewage, they're dispersing radioactive elements into the air all over Japan, depending upon the wind direction. And two, they're left with a concentrated sludge or ash after burning, which is also very radioactive. I mean, God Almighty. And, and the radiation in the sewage is actually coming from water draining off the fields and off the concrete and off the roads, which are contaminated, contaminated with radioactive fallout, and then it gets into the sewage system. Is that correct? Is that where it comes from? Uh, you're absolutely right. This is a very gloomy prospect here. You're, you're going to lose viewers. <laughs> viewers? I don't this. have viewers. We only have listeners, Arnie. <laughs> okay. Well, you're absolutely right, though, Helen, um, that... Uh, there is no, there, there's no solution here. The Japanese don't know where to put this material, um, just like they don't know where to put the higher level nuclear fuel. The, you know, the Japanese never had a plan for a nuclear fuel repository, like you know, some sort of deep underground storage for nuclear fuel. The theory in Japan was that they would recycle, they would use liquid sodium reactors and stuff like that. Oh yeah. So after Fukushima, that whole concept has broken down. And now the Japanese have to face the fact that they're on a seismically unstable island, and where are they going to put the nuclear fuel, the spent nuclear fuel? They had a deal with Mongolia. They were working on a contract with Mongolia to store it in Mongolia. But uh, just last week, the Mongolian government canceled the, um, the deal because the quantities of radioactive material were becoming uh, uh, extraordinarily high. Okay, now we've got five minutes. If you were president of the United States right now, Arnie Gunderson, what would you do? Uh, I, I, first off, the Mark I reactors should be shut down. There's 35 around the world. There's 23 in the United States. And um, the, the risk from a Mark I reactor is just way too high. You know, I think, though, we, we need some sort of a vision. Uh, rather than spend money on enormous single-unit nuclear plants, like building a, a marginal line of, of, of power plants to fight last year's battle. I think there's three things on the horizon. The first is we can, we can conserve. I mean, here's Tokyo. Tokyo had 16% less power, and they're still there. You know, they, they, they got by. They turned lights out, and they cut the, cut the air conditioning back, and, and, and everybody survived. But so we can conserve, and we can, we can be more efficient. The second thing is renewables, and uh, I think between you know, solar and wind and hydroelectric and things like that, uh, we, can, we can generate a lot of power. And the, and the third thing is a smart grid uh, where we can distribute the power. Uh, you know, we didn't have that in the 20th century, but in the 21st century with computers, we can move power more easily. So, you know, for instance, Japan's a big country, so you could put windmills offshore and where the wind isn't blowing, it's going to be blowing somewhere else, and you can distribute that power mm. with a smart grid. Mm. So I really think Japan or the United States needs an approach to say, okay, we're going to be more efficient. We don't need another power plant in the United States for 30 years if we just became as efficient as the French. Well, so, so if, you, if, we, if you were President Arnie Gunderson, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? And Maggie would be the first lady... <laughs> Um, would you close down all the reactors within a certain period of time, 104 reactors in America? Would you close them down, Arnie? Well, we've got the 23 Mark ones that I definitely think should, should be shut down immediately. You know? and, and we have a deal is a deal, and we've got the, the remaining reactors have 40-year lives, and I think we should let them run out their 40-year well, lives. Oh, you do? Oh, boy, if I were president, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have a first lady. Um I, I'd shut them all down because Americans waste 28% of the electricity they currently use and nuclear power only generates 20% of the electricity. So as you pointed out, you know, if you have to save like they did in Tokyo, that you can. And, you know, electricity is an imperative for us to survive and, you know, we could... There, there are so many ways to save electricity, but that's for another day, I think, to talk about that. Anyway, um, look... 
President Arnie Gunderson. <laughs> <laughs> We've run out of time, but thanks so much for this update. We're, you know that your programs attract so many viewers because people are absolutely hungry for this information, Arnie, as you well know. And you're a national treasure. You and Maggie, you're national treasures, and one day you will be terribly appreciated. Uh, well, well, thank you, and please send your viewers to the Fairwinds website, and there's a little donate button there. We would sure appreciate a hand. Yes, Arnie needs money. He's not being paid for this wonderful service he's providing, whereas the people on Wall Street give themselves bonuses of millions of dollars. So it's time Arnie got bonuses for the work he's doing. So anyway, thanks again, Arnie, and we will talk to you in the near future. Thanks, Helen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. My guest today on If You Love This Planet was Arnie Gunderson, an energy advisor with 39 years of nuclear power engineering experience in the United States.